thank you so much, James, and thank you everyone for having me here today. I'm so excited to be here, and I'm going to share a little information that I think might come from a slightly different angle from some of the other speakers. So, like James said, uh, in my current role, my teams focus on turning data into information. And all of my roles throughout my career have, have sort of been in that space. You know, what data helps us understand a buyer experience, the buyer journey. So whether that was, you know, looking at denim sales when I was in the retail industry, or lead conversion and close rates when I was working in automotive advertising, to now looking at software buying experience, it's all been about the data. And you might hear that, you might hear me go on about data and numbers and assume, poor thing, she has been in Excel her whole life, and you would not be that wrong. Uh, but the real common thread that mattered to me in all those jobs was the storytelling. So taking data and understanding the story that it told, because I believe that all data tells a story. It's just kind of in a numerical language, uh, but my favorite part of my jobs has always been translation. So turning the numbers into English. So at G2, the data that I primarily work with is about software user experience. So we are most known for our reviews. We just crossed the 1 million review mark last week. It was very exciting. Uh, but we also want to understand the rest of the journey. So what happens before the review? So we performed a study earlier this year, and I'm going to share some numbers from it uh, to help us understand that buying experience. So what goes into a purchase decision? What resources are buyers using today? And the biggest takeaway for me from that study was really seeing that the buyer is changing. You know, the, the buyer is showing up differently today than they did a number of years ago. And why that matters is that if the buyer is changing, the seller has to change too. So we'll connect that in with sales intelligence tools because this whole ecosystem of technology has emerged to help salespeople adapt to that changing buyer. Uh, but even that ecosystem has gotten pretty confusing. So we'll try to break down that world of technology a little bit, talk about what might be a little frightening even about it and how it's changing salespeople's jobs, but then also how you can, I think, really really embrace it so that you and your teams can be stronger than ever. So as I said, we performed a study earlier this year to dig into the software buying experience. And there was one statistic that really stood out that was you know, truly startling. Uh, so if you can't see it on here, 58% of UK, French, and German software buyers told us they aren't even talking to you guys until they've already made up their mind about their decision. If you add in the rest of EMEA and APAC, 61%. Now, North America was a little bit lower at 44%, but the global trend is clear. Software buyers are getting themselves more educated before they're engaging with sales. Obviously, we wanted to understand that a little bit more, so we dug in further, you know, what's going into their decision? If they aren't talking to sales, who are they talking to? And what we found was that shifts in consumer behavior are showing up in people's behavior at work too. So most of this room is in sales, right? But every single person in this room is absolutely a consumer. So let's see, you know, when you planned your last holiday, anybody here use TripAdvisor or something similar? Yeah? Um, what about a home repair? You know, did you maybe talk to a neighbor or a friend? These are all things I've done recently, by the way. Uh, or your current job. You know, did anybody here read Glassdoor reviews before you accepted your position? I know I did. Um, and so like I said, you know, that, that consumer behavior has trained us. So when we're coming to work, we're doing the same things. Our study showed us that the top resources for software buyers were vendor websites, peers and colleagues, and review sites. So exactly the things we do at home. Now, um, the frightening thing about that is that half that conversation is still happening out without you engaged, right? So you know, that's great they're looking at vendor websites. You know, maybe they're not talking to you, but they're still checking out your products. But you still have you know, lost some control of the conversation. And what that means is that once you are engaged, 
every interaction matters more than ever before. So the good news is there's tons of technology to help you with that. And we are going to dig into that. I'll be talking about sales intelligence in particular, but I know there are some great speakers from, from Hootsuite, from Perkbox, I think UiPath is here, uh, who can help you dig into some of the specifics as well. But what was really striking to me was seeing how much growth we've had in interest in these types of technologies. So G2 actually first recognized sales intelligence as a category in 2012. The chart starts in 2014, because back then there was so little data, it wasn't even worth including. Um, but in 2012, when we first defined the category, we had seven core sales intelligence products. Now this chart includes sales intelligence, and then in 2016 and 2017, that's where we started to really see the branching of new categories that, that were blossoming into this overall ecosystem. But could I get a guess from the room? Back to that core sales intelligence category, we had seven. How many sales intelligence products do you think there are out there today? It's not the number on the chart, so I'm talking about the core, the core category. Okay, you were actually spot on with 295, so slightly over, uh, but 295 core sales intelligence products. Uh, so then you see that growth, and then in 2017, as I said, we, we started to see other branching technologies come in, um, but I think that really what happened there was that it also co coincided with the emergence of new technologies. So that's where we started to see AI come into play. So if we go into that branching a little bit more, that's where we start to see in 2017, we had sales enablement come in, sales coaching, so two internal focused technologies that help companies really optimize their sales activities. Later in 2017, we saw AI sales assistant and sales engagement come into play. These two lean a little further into AI and then also start to have some external communication going on. And then last but not least, conversation intelligence in late 2018. Uh, and conversation intelligence is the, the most AI enhanced yet of all of these technologies. So who here has been selling since 2012? And yeah, fair number of hands. So back in 2012, were any of you using sales technology or sales, sales intelligence tools? No, not a single hand. Uh, oh, or like, like a LinkedIn sales navigator, yeah. that kind of thing, yeah. Um, okay, so maybe one. What about today? Who here is using sales intelligence now? Okay, lots of hands. Who's using more than one product from, yeah, so a number of hands too. Uh, so a lot of you have probably experienced firsthand how complex this universe is. So let's look at it from a different angle. Uh, we're going to go back to 2012 again, to when we were really just dealing with those core sales intelligence technologies. Now, these technologies were developed to help you with the who, right? So at core, you know, sales intelligence has changed some, but they're still at core helping you understand, are you contacting the right people at the right prospect companies? So this was a huge leg up initially, right? So, so really gave you an edge, but it's now become really foundational. Um, and that's where we saw more technology emerge, sales enablement that layered on the what. So you know who you're contacting, and sales enablement is going to help your organization organize all of your content to make it easy for sales to produce it to the right client. But we all know that just the right content doesn't cut it, right? You need the right content at the right time, and you have to deliver it in the right way. And that's where things get really interesting. Uh, so with the last two years, we've seen all of these new technologies emerge that help you with the how and with the when. So sales engagement that can connect with those sales-enabled pieces of content and drive them right into your live selling process. So that's where you get right content, right time. Sales coaching and conversation intelligence that really lean into the how. So both of these tools uh, make it easier for your, your sales reps and your sales managers to have really effective coaching conversations. They have different degrees of, of text analytics and machine learning involved with, with them uh, that can take your email communication. They can even transcribe your calls and provide insights and analytics, uh, even identifying key turning points in the conversation, 
in many cases, sentiment analysis that can help you understand what's the right action at the right time that's necessary in your next steps. And last but not least, we have the AI sales assistant category. Now, this is, um, this is a tool that can really help to automate your routine tasks. So this is where it starts to take stuff off of your sales rep's plates. So it can take care of things like follow-up, scheduling calls, or even you know, data entry, things that free your sales team up to, to perform the things where they're adding the most value. Now, you see all this technology, and I think oftentimes we hear that, that it can be a little bit frightening, so I think it's confusing, but also it's already driving a lot of change in sales reps' jobs. So the things that they used to do, the stuff where they felt like they were adding value, there's technology that can take care of a lot of that these days but it's never going to fully replace a sales team. And that's because of what's missing up here. And what's missing is something that technology just can't do. So let's run through the list again. We have who, we have what, we have how, and we have when. We're missing <coughs> where and why. And I think you can argue where is less of an issue these days, right? You know, we have video conferencing, you can communicate with anyone around the world at almost any time. But why is everything? You always start with the why, and that's where you need a human touch to really be able to understand, you know, what's your buyer's why? What's their motivation? And to, to be able to connect that with, with explanations of how you and your product are the right solution to help them get what they want. It's also important to remember why technology is never going to be able to meet that why. Um, yes, we have all of these tools, that do more and more for us every day. I mean, it's, it's incredible the stuff that we have available to us today, right? But there's also examples almost every day of places where, where AI and technology fall a little short. So some of these are, are you know, funny even, or you know, at least harmless. Uh, so whether it's you know, Boston Dynamics having this really cool robot doing a, this awesome demo, and you know, the, the robot jumping over things, you know, performing pretty delicate tasks, and then tripping on a curtain when it tries to leave the stage, or you know, AI models that tried to predict the outcome of last year's World Cup, but they couldn't quite handle predicting the human interactions of football players on the field. But then there are also a little bit more harmful ones out there, like Amazon had to scrap an AI-enabled hiring algorithm because turns out it was trained to have gender bias. So there's a classic data phrase, garbage in, garbage out, and I think it's really important to remember when you think about how to use all of these technologies. Because unless you find the right balance of human and technology, all you're going to do is make mistakes more efficiently. And nobody wants that, right? Um, so what I would encourage you to do is as you listen to all of the speakers today, think about how to make the technology your friend. So really finding that balance, embracing the technology, to make you stronger, to make your sales team stronger, but reminding them how that human touch also matters and you really need both. It's gonna be that perfect marriage that's gonna allow you to use all the technology, but it will make your sales reps stronger, faster, better, and more successful. Thank you. <laughs>